what's enabled us to, to kind of survive 10 years to kind of uh, to, to achieve some form of longevity, I guess, is, is resigning yourself to being unfashionable and uh, just ignoring trends and movements and what's hip in music, um, I think is, is kind of is one of the main reasons why um, we've managed to kind of to have a fan base that's kind of grown and grown and grown over the years because we followed our, our kind of singular vision and we haven't really worried about what's hip because the problem when you when you start concerning yourself with what's hip is that music moves so fast and fashion and music moves so fast that if by the time that you get out of the studio and you've made what was considered a hip record it's not hip anymore you know so if you just kind of resign yourself to being unfashionable to to, to cre creating a kind of a, a, a strong identity which is very very much your own and um, coupled with blind faith and insane amounts of self-belief you know I think that you can't you know you you can achieve a decade's worth of you know uh, uh, of music creation and hopefully for us another another decade coming up what was captured on the first album was I think very youthful and and, and exuberant and and uh, and naive kind of energy, really. We were like kind of kids in a candy shop, I guess. And we kind of, we didn't really know our way around the studio, you know. It was all fresh and all, um, we couldn't believe that somebody had actually fallen for it, you know, kind of thing. And then it ended up like giving us money to make a record. So it was uh, kind of a dream come true. And I think it kind of captures that sort of, youthful exuberance and you know kind of joy at, at, at being there. Um, it was also before, it was 96, so it was I guess before Pro Tools became really big and everything like that, so we made a record which was very very much just about us playing live in the studio. Then for the subsequent albums you know we kind of went off in various technological directions until the last one which is Meds which is where we went back to basically a very, very similar approach and method. Um, and that kind of re-energized us as a band. Well, I think most artists um, have a little voice in the back of their heads, you know, which is continuously telling them that they're crap, you know. And that, that, that voice is very, very useful um, because it sort of pushes you to, to to improve and to always challenge yourself, and you're always your your, your own worst critic. Um, but when you, you begin as as an artist to be kind of either collaborate or go on tour with people that you grew up admiring, um, like like David Bowie, like um, Michael Stipe and uh, we end up touring with Frank Black and stuff like that and playing live on stage with him, for example. That kind of seal of approval from your heroes kind of makes that annoying voice in the back of your head just almost disappear. And then, you know, about a month later when you've kind of come down from sort of thinking how, well, I'm so cool. Um, the voice is back there, and then you continue to try and, and, and make it and improve yourself all the time. But you know, I, I, th I think that with, with most most artists, you know, there's always this kind of insecurity, and I, I also think that it kind of it as you achieve more, that insecurity kind of gets bigger, and the that voice gets louder. You know, um, so when people that you kind of worshipped as a kid kind of tap you on the shoulder and go yeah yeah what you do is all right it's um, it, it helps you soldier on you know we re-released meds at the beginning of this year in, a, in, in the US and the track listing changed a little bit and we put some extra tracks on them and one of them is our cover of Running up that hill by Kate Bush, and we're we're kids of the '80s, you know. 
basically that's when we were kind of started listening to the radio and buying records and um, watching like hit parade TV and stuff like that. So I guess we grew up with with like disco, but also the birth of alternative. And in the 80s, I think there was just really, really challenging pop music. Um, I think pop music today has just become very kind of insipid and sort of lowest common denominator, you know? Pop music in the 80s, you know, was, was, was concerned with trying to break boundaries, you know? And you hear something like Ashes to Ashes by David Bowie, for example. It's a really weird song. And one of those weird songs is also Running Up That Hill by Kate Bush. It's got this kind of tribal beat, really kind of abstract lyrics. Um, she's got a, a really kooky voice. And this, this whole thing put together was just qu quite weird. So the, when we choose cover versions, we have a tendency to kind of go back to those kind of songs, those songs from the 80s that uh, made, us, uh, made us get interested in music and made us interested in pop music, I guess. Um, and uh, one of the ones is, is running up that hill, and we just try to infuse it with as, as much emotion as possible, and that had to do with kind of slowing the track down. The original is quite considerably f faster tempo, um, and we felt that perhaps the real heaviness, the real emotional weight of what Kate Bush was saying was perhaps lost due to the tempo so we wanted to really really slow it down so that the, the the weight of every word was was apparent to the listener and um we met kate bush at a party once and she gave us the seal of approval so it's uh a-okay